I'm sure any artist who have been drawing for a while knows just how much of a struggle it is when it comes to art styles. We're often told to be patient, and art style isn't something you can consciously find. It takes time to develop a style. But what if those advices are wrong for you? Hear me out. There are two artists who are at different stages of their careers, and they're both studying under the same master. The first artist, Nathan, just started out. Nathan is not the brightest student in the class. He's just having fun learning basic fundamentals every day and enjoys doodling. Oh, wait till you start learning anatomy, Nathan. The second artist, Sam, is a little more serious. He has been drawing for a while and can consistently put out good drawings. Sam is the kind of student that's better than everyone else in the class, also has a good eye for smaller details, and is even starting to understand advanced design principles. And so this is where I want to introduce you to this Japanese concept called shuhari, which describes the three stages of mastery over a skill, which each stage represented by a kanji. Now you might ask, okay, so what does this have to do with art styles? And why all the Naruto references? The first kanji, shu, means to protect or to keep. This is when someone like Nathan is actively working on their fundamentals or traditional ways of a skill without question. And the advice at the beginning sounds reasonable for Nathan. I believe there's a saying like finish your ramen so you can get a refill or something However, this is often the mistake that most artists like Nathan make. They tend to rush too much into finding a style without having solid fundamentals to back it up. You typically see a lot of these artists having an unstable style. They're not very consistent and their drawings lack the necessary foundation to hold everything together. Oh geez, this is turning into a roasting video. On the other hand, Sam has solid foundation, never tried to break out of the mold like that insufferable friend you have in high school that always get with grades. Anyways, he diligently studied under the master and got very ahead in the fundamentals. Someone like Sam is at the second stage called Ha, which means to destroy or to break. In this stage, the student needs to start experimenting and challenge old traditions. They're starting to ask what if questions. Hmm, what if I start drawing furry thirst traps to get more followers? Ooh, what if I betray my best friend and run away to a random snake dude that's trying to take over my body? Anyways, Sam is taking art very seriously and is grinding gesture drawing after gesture drawings every day, hoping it will somehow change his art, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, Sam has a concern. Deep down, despite being better than Nathan, he also has his own insecurities. He can't help but to worry about the transition into an art career and started to realize a big part of that is having a solid recognizable style. He sees all these successful artists on social media seemingly having no problem coming up with their own unique styles. And now Sam is starting to feel stuck. Sure, he has great fundamentals and produces decent drawings, but ultimately, He's just a copy of his master. He needs a style unique to his own in order to make a name for himself. Worse yet, Nathan is getting better day by day with the fundamentals. He can't let somebody like Nathan catching up to him. He was the best in his class. So as someone like Sam, how do we progress? What Sam needs to do in this stage is to start experimenting and stop listening to advice like be patient. Contrary to someone like Nathan who should be patient and focus on absorbing information instead of applying them. It's time for Sam to start applying his knowledge instead of just doing mindless practice all the time. So here are two practical advice for Sam's identity crisis. One, be specific. Sometimes the difference between two distinct styles is just the little details and decisions made in the drawing process. How thick are the lines? Do I color the lines? Where do I draw a line and where do I leave it blank? When will one piece finally end? Another thing you can ask is what brushes should I use? And yes, I said brushes. All these YouTube art gurus love the default hot round brush so much. The round brush here is actually my primary brush for almost everything that I do. Just do studies with a simple, large, hard edge brush, no jitter. Yes, brushes don't matter until you're looking for a style. You see, custom brushes give a certain flair to your drawings that no hot round brush is ever going to replicate.
I like your own special weapon. The default brush is like the Rasengan. Literally every one of Naruto's mentor can use it. It was special in the beginning, but at some point he had to evolve the skill so much in order to fight stronger enemies. It's the same with brushes. At some point, you have to stop using the hard run brush and live life a little more. Start experimenting with different brushes. Those weird ones that you don't see other artists using, yeah, those are the ones that you should be going for. You want something unique enough, but at the same time, usable. Something that you can stick with for a long time, not just putting it away after a few weeks. These questions will help you rethink what you learn in your shoe phase and start mixing in different techniques and tools into your work. Number two, pay attention. In this day and age, we get bombarded by so much art constantly on social media. Oh my god, it's the boomer argument again. Listen up, kiddo. It's so hard nowadays not to just scroll past an amazing piece of art and taking them for granted because you see so much of it. And I understand that I do it all the time too. But in order to grow out of the shoe phase, you need to start paying attention to the things other artists are doing differently. So the next time you come across a piece of art that really moved you in any way, whether it's their line work, the color choices, or the impressive amount of detail in their anatomy, <coughs> really sit down and try to analyze what they did to achieve this. Break it down to the smallest details that make the piece good, taking notes, and try to bring some of those things into your own art. Here's the secret though. Many of you watching this probably think, Oh, I'll just work on my fundamentals until they're perfect before I start experimenting. No, God, please, no! If you look at some of these artists, you will notice a pattern where almost none of them are good at everything. The reason why you wish you can be like them is because they all have that one thing that they do really, really well. They're not waiting around to master their fundamentals or have the perfect setup or anything. So pick something that you're confident on and start experimenting. For example, if you're good at anatomy but suck at perspective, play around with body types and exaggerating their shapes but don't mix in any perspective yet. Keep perspective in the shoe phase and start progressing anatomy into ha. Simply grinding gesture drawings every day isn't going to do anything. And that's what Sam did. He started to observe and analyze many different techniques that he finds interesting and applying them into his own work. He understands that an art style are often just a collection of different techniques and tiny decisions applied to a drawing. After years of experimenting and getting feedback, Sam finally has a style that's recognizable and unique. He now finds himself standing toe to toe with his master, Halo. Oh, oops, wrong guy. They have finally reached the final stage, Re, which means to leave or to depart. This is when Sam started thinking, I'm too good for you losers, so I'm gonna run off to this random snake dude. At the same time, Nathan is inspired looking at Sam's journey. He's been constantly reminding himself to stay focused and work on his fundamentals, not rushing into finding his style. But now, it's Nathan's turn to challenge his own beliefs and go on a journey of his own. He understands not to chase a style, but to forge it. And what better way to start doing that than analyzing the methods other artists use in their own work. Just like what I did in this video here that you should check out next. Bye!